Hello everybody and I hope you're having a great summer. This is Willie Dayan coming to you from yourorthocoach.com. So we're going to be doing a quick tip video today about horizontal attachments. I'm not going to be able to go through the whole webinar that I plan on sharing with you on August 14th. I hope you'll join me at that time. But in the meantime, what I'm going to do is take one area of the uh, talk that I'll be doing and that's customizing conventional horizontal attachments. There are a lot of things that we do in treatment of a particular situation. And I'm not going to go through the whole treatment right now of Jared and why I decided to use a phase one treatment to distalize his molars, correct the class two, improve the facial pattern of growth, and then I have to walk into aligners to tidy up the details. But when I walk into the aligners and I get my first ClinCheck, you're going to see a sample of that ClinCheck, and then I'm going to show you how I customized horizontal attachments in his case to be able to strengthen the forces that I needed to level the lower curve of speed. Here's the first ClinCheck that I got back for uh, Jared's treatment. And as part of the treatment, without going again into the details, there is leveling of the curve of SPI. And I know that horizontal um, attachments are required and the optimized attachments that appear on those teeth may not be able to give me the kind of leveling of the curve of speed that I need, which is the first and most important thing I want to do. So in the lower arch, I have a couple of choices on the bicuspids. And what I'm going to be doing is showing you how I customize the attachments that I choose to use on these teeth. We have two choices in our attachments, I think that are horizontally retentive and still forgiving on the lower bicuspids. One of them is the horizontal bevel to the occlusal attachment, and one of them is the horizontal bevel to the gingival attachment. The horizontal bevel to the occlusal attachment, I put it on the tooth just the way it came off of that um, palette here, if you want, our little painting palette. And I'm going to position the attachment so that it is at the right height of the tooth. And then I'm going to leave it at the very angle that it came onto the tooth. I'm not going to change its angle. It's forgiving. And it has about a 1.25 millimeter surface area of retention that's forgiving that working with the lingual wall of the tooth will give us a grip on that tooth for curve of speed leveling. The horizontal bevel to the gingival attachment, I can also change the height of the attachment and put it at the right height on the tooth. But in addition to doing that, I want to do one more step. Because the retentive wall of this horizontal bevel to the gingival attachment is the two millimeter high wall, but that two millimeter high wall right now is so parallel to the lingual surface of the lower premolar that I may not get good retention on this tooth. And I don't want to be dependent on just the little 0.25 millimeter ledge that's at the bottom of the attachment. So what I'm going to do is bevel the attachment so it's gingival flush to the tooth surface. When I turn the attachment this way, I've made that two millimeter wall now much more retentive and converging to the gingiva compared to the lingual wall of that premolar. So now I have good retention on the four. And if you look at the angle of the retention wall for the lower right four or the retention wall of the lower right five which have both two different attachments one horizontal bevel to the occlusal one horizontal bevel to the gingival but gingival beveled flush to the tooth surface they're very similar it's angled it's forgiving but it is converging with the lingual wall and will give us a great grip on the tooth. So I think both of these attachments can be successful. There's still a number of changes I would have to make to this ClinCheck to make it successful, including increasing the curve of speed, leveling by erupting the premolars more so that at the end of the ClinCheck, we don't have an open bite, but we might even have hard contacts in these teeth. So we need much more leveling of the curve of speed, more intrusion of the lower incisors, more torque of the upper incisors. There are a few changes we're going to make to this ClinCheck. Here you can see a video of the ClinCheck that I did actually use for Jared. And you can tell how in this 
ClinCheck, at the end of the treatment, there's much more contact of the teeth. So after the bite jump, you can see here that we would have hard contact in the premolar region. The lower premolars are actually higher than the molars because of the curvisby leveling. But you can see we use three millimeter horizontal bevel to the gingival attachments, gingival flush to the tooth surface so that they were retentive and they were angled properly to be retentive on those teeth, which is so important to the curve of speed leveling. Here in the pictures, you can see the progress that Jared made during wearing the aligners. So after five months of aligner wear, his curve of speed leveling is going very well. And after nine months of aligner wear, he's not yet finished the first set of aligners, but he continues to get very, very solid curve of speed leveling, a good grip on the aligners, and we're not running into a bigger posterior open bite. We're closing that and we have good contact in our posterior teeth as we go along the treatment. His class two, of course, is under great control as well. To see the rest of the treatment of this case and to learn more about customizing our horizontal attachments and the choices we make in horizontally retentive attachments for our orthodontic treatment, please join me on our webinar, which is going to be on August 14th. And I hope you've enjoyed this quick tip video. Have a great day, everybody.